Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello and welcome to the video for what is the git default pawn class node. We're going to run our example. We have two buttons, default and monster. We click on default. Nothing works. We click on monster. Well, it's actually working, but it's switching to where we currently are. Let's take a look at the node and figure out why this is happening and what we use it for. So if we look at our example here, when I click my button, it's getting the default pawn class for controller node. It takes in a target of a game mode, so the game mode that we're currently using, because that's where the default pawn is at, and then a controller input. And it's going to check for the default pawn for that controller. Then I'm casting it to an actor, blah, 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 blah. Basically, I'm going to go ahead and spawn in this class if we don't already have one, or else I'm going to switch over to it. Now, the problem is, if we look at our map and we look at our settings, we don't have a default pawn class. So we're trying to spawn in nothing. So because there's nothing, well, there's nothing we can do. We're going to switch this over to third-person character. So now our game mode's default pawn class is third-person character. We'll hit play. We'll hit default. Now I have my third-person character that I can move around like we expect. And if I hit monster, it's going to switch back over to this little monster character I have. Clicking back to default, switches me back to here. So there's two things to note here. Get default pawn class for controller. This is our execute node here. And default pawn class, the actual variable reference, are going to return back the same thing 99% of the time. So if we type in default pawn class, you can see right here we have our get and set default pawn class and the get default pawn class for controller. Now the biggest difference here is the get default pawn class for controller node does a few checks behind the scene and if there's an error or if you run it in the editor it's going to return back your default pawn class this actual setting here the one that was set up when you set it up whereas the default pawn class getter right here when we just get default pawn class we spell it right class oh context sensitive would probably be helpful wouldn't it and spelling would be better D oh, seriously Default, thank you. I have to refresh. Refresh. This one right here, the actual variable can be changed when you reset it. So this one, it's a fail safe. It's going to give you back the default default. If things fail, whatever was set up in the actual game mode itself when you were designing it in the editor. Whereas this one will get you the current value. And if there's ever an issue, well, you get back the one that has an issue. And that's pretty much it. Those are the differences between the two of them. Now you might use this, for example, if you want to grab the default pawn class and do something with it. In this case, my character may be spawning in as nothing on purpose. I don't have something spawning in. I'm auto-possessing, for example, a viewport or a camera or something for an introduction. And once that's done, rather than having your character standing around doing nothing, you can always grab your default pawn class, whatever you've set up, spawn it in, and then possess it. So that way you don't really have a bunch of extra fluff in the world until you need it. And it's also useful if maybe you destroy your character and then you want to go ahead and respawn in later. By grabbing the default pawn class, you're going to grab whatever the settings are for that map rather than hard coding them in somewhere else that you may change later. And that's it. Get default pawn class for controller and default pawn class are getter, both target or game mode, and return back the class that is set up as your default pawn class in the game mode that you're currently using.